The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. My friends, isn't this a great list of things to be thankful for on this Thanksgiving Eve, if we want to call it that? I mean, think about this. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of saints in light. What is this talking about, my friends? Well, it's the fact that we're just nothing but dirty, uh, rotten sinners. We're sinful through and through. But positionally, when Christ died on that cross, he died for every sin of the whole world, every sin you've ever committed and ever uh, that I've ever committed. And it was nailed on that cross. He died for those sins. And when we put our faith in him, we all our sins are washed away and positionally we're made meet. We're made uh, worthy uh, to be a member of heaven, to be able to go to heaven, to be a member of, uh, of the, the, the society of the saved, to be a members of, of the part, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We don't deserve it, but it's... Something to be thankful for that he made us that available that to us. And then he says this, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. What a great thing to be thankful for, that we've been delivered from the power of darkness. This whole world is under the power of darkness. Blindness has taken their eyes, uh, covered their eyes, that they would not believe the truth of the gospel. Giving thanks that he hath delivered us from that power and hath giving thanks also for the fact that he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And through that son, we have redemption. We need to give thanks for the redemption that we have through the blood, Amen. through the bodily sacrifice of Jesus and the shedding of the blood on the cross. And then it says, even the forgiveness of sins. I love this prayer uh, here in Colossians. He's opening up to these folks and saying, this is what I'm thankful for. This is what I'm praying to God for. Paul was a great man of prayer. He was a great Christian. He was a scholar. He was really a giant among men, morally and intellectually and spiritually. But, you know, more than all of that, I think, out of his characteristics, he was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd help me as I preach and talk about this subject of thanksgiving and prayer. I pray, Lord, that it would be a blessing and a help to us, God, tonight, Lord, and that that our prayer life would just be saturated with, with thanksgiving, as it seems from the Bible that, that it's supposed to be. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prayer is uh, multifaceted, and there's many aspects to it, but it's just really prayer. Somebody said, well, prayer is asking and receiving, and that's true. But it, prayer is, at its most basic form, talking to God. And when we think about this, we think about Paul as a, someone who prayed. Uh, he prayed. He was known for praying for himself. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7, it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I've had a couple of people tell me, and I don't understand this mindset, but they say, well, I'll pray for others, but I won't pray for myself. It seems selfish. Well, in reality, God wants us to pray and to bring every need unto him. God loves us. And it's just like a father that he is our father, but a father, earthly father, loves his children. Jesus even gave this illustration 
when he said, "Does your if you were a, 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 a son or a daughter were to ask their their earthly father for a piece of bread, would they just, would that father just give them a, a stone?" No, we know that it's it's the parent's job to constantly, constantly give these kids food. Oh my goodness, they need food all hours of the day and night, don't they? And uh, I'm hungry. You know, well, you, we just ate dinner. I know, but I'm hungry. Well, we just had snacks. I'm still hungry. <laughs> I'm kidding with you. But but listen, that's a parent's job. And listen, God, we 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 may get tired of it sometimes, but you know, thank God, you know, Bible says, you know, that he won't upbraid us. I, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I'll upbraid my kids a little bit. But the Bible says, you know, if we'll ask of God, we need wisdom, we'll ask of him, he give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not. And so he's not, he doesn't say, oh, it's you again. You know, I can't believe you need more. No, my friends, come and pray. And, you know, sometimes we get situations where we're, it's hard. It's hard what we're going through. And God just says, you know what? I may not give you what you want. Take away your hardship. Take away your problem and solve every problem for you. But he said this, he says, I'll be with you in that problem. He says, my grace will be sufficient. My grace is sufficient for thee. So he asked others to pray for him too. By the way, that's a biblical thing. If you have a prayer request, bring it to your brothers and sisters, uh, people that you know pray. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, 18, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So he had a prayer list and he was praying for the saints. And then he said this, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make it known, the make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So he says, you know, at this point of the writing of this letter, I'm an ambassador to the prison system here. I'm an ambassador to uh, the jailers, the guards, to to the other inmates. I'm an ambassador here, and I'm praying that God would give me boldness. In this situation, well, listen, um, you know, if you have a need in your life, ask other Christians to pray for it. That's what he asked for. And uh, God did answer that prayer request and God gave him boldness. And by the way, he prayed for other people. Paul, uh, you know, uh, he mentions that in this passage as well. Paul was following Jesus example and Jesus said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are they are thine. I pray for, he said, I pray for my people. And Paul prayed for, he said, I, I pray for all the saints. He, then I was, understand, I want you to know that one of the things that you'll see in many of his prayer, in many of Paul's prayers in these letters, is that they are full of praise to the Lord. And the, one of the greatest ways we can give praise and one of the ways that we can show our thanksgiving is uh, ju just to praise him and say thank you. He says in Colossians chapter 1, uh, you're there in Colossians 1, um, but if you look back to verse 3, it says, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. He said, I give thanks to God. I give thanks to, to, to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Verse 12, he says, giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance with saints in light. You know, you'll find a variation of the, the word thanks here, thanksgiving and so forth. It comes from the same Greek word that's, I don't know, something like eucharisto, eucharisteo or something like that. But it's used 39 times in the New Testament. It's a major teaching. And all through the Old Testament, you'll find the word thanksgiving and thanks and so forth. This is a major teaching of the Bible. This same phrase here, that's uh, the Greek word is translated, we give thanks or giving thanks in verse 12, is also found in Matthew 26, where Jesus prayed over the last his last supper with his disciples. He said this, as he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood and of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Christians, when we bow our head, whether it's at our home, 
as we're teaching our family members, our, our children, and, and or if we're at the store, if we're at a restaurant, at Cracker Barrel or wherever, if we bow our heads and we pray, whether it's out loud or silently, we're letting the whole world know we're thankful to God. You bow your head, you get that plate of food. You don't just be like the pagans and the heathens start just diving in. <laughs> no, you, you stop. Hey, everybody, let's have prayer. You know what that does? It shows that you're thankful. You're thankful. The verse was brought up that every good and perfect gift cometh down from above. <clears throat> Jesus prayed. In John 6, 11, Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. Not a meal should go by without us giving thanks. If you're by yourself, you give thanks. If you're with a group, you give thanks to the Lord. Bow your head and pray. My granddad, we I was just, we brought up grandma. I was thinking about grandpa. He would pray over every chorus. Like when dessert came, he would stop and say, hey, let's everybody, they're bringing the dessert. Let's have prayer again. I think he just was very thankful for the dessert. <laughs> He prayed over this, this, his pills. Amen. <laughs> he took a lot of them. It was like, a, you should have saw it. He would fill up a Dixie cup like this with all his vitamins and supplements. And then he would take them all down in one single swallow. I mean, it was just like this many, like all those little pill, uh, vitamins and supplements. And he just, be, <laughs> I said, man, alive. Anyway, good memories. But he was thankful. He was thankful. I, I can't knock it. I mean, you know, at, when I was younger, I was like, why is he praying over his his pills and his dessert. Didn't we, didn't, did the prayer at dinner count? Like, but anyway, you know, okay. <laughs> Can't be thankful enough. Amen. You know, um, Jesus, when he had uh, gave the meals to, to the people to feed the 5,000, the 7,000, what did he do? He gave thanks every, every time. So we have an example we should pray over every meal. That is a uniquely Christian thing. That's a Christian thing. And it's something that, you know, I'm thankful for, you know, Thanksgiving. And man, man, that's a Christian thing. So um, I like this verse in John 11, 41. It says, then they took away the, the stone from the place where the dead was. Speaking of Lazarus, when Jesus led him, uh, you know, uh, raised him from the dead. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee. The thou hast heard me. Amen. And uh, th just, you cannot separate prayer and thanksgiving. You just can't. You can't separate it. And uh, a, a grateful person is a praying person. A, a praying person is a grateful person, in my opinion. So what's the point? Prayer and praise, thanksgiving, they're inseparable. Back there in Colossians 1, I had you read uh, up through 14, but let's read verse 16. It says this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing in, uh, with grace in your heart to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So guess what? If we're complaining, if we're murmuring, if we're, if we're down in the mouth and all of that, we're not doing right because he literally said in everything that we do or say, we're supposed to do it with thanksgiving to the Lord. Everything. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, everything you do or say, do it in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God. And remember, that's how we, we get our rewards too, right? Because it's in the name of the Lord that we do things and, and, and you know, do our, our good deeds. We give to the alms to the poor. We help people. We, we give our, our offerings. We, uh, we, you know, do, do whatever we do for the Lord. Go soul winning. We do it in the name of the Lord and um, we give thanks to God. And by the way, it's the same word that's found in Romans 1. And, and I want to just make this point here. It's the ungrateful who don't pray. It's the ungrateful. Listen to how the Bible refers to the to the reprobates of the world. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they th were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. There's a lot of people who are just un ingrateful, ungrateful. I like Thanksgiving, but you know, the, the holiday of Thanksgiving is under attack, you know. 
Keep Christ in, in thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs> the YouTube Twitter channel just tweeted out. Well, I don't know what you say. They, the X channel or whatever. Uh, Elon Musk. Uh, the X whatever it is. Anyway, they said they tweeted this out. Thanksgiving is a loaded word. And it and 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 uh, and said these girls explain what it means to what Thanksgiving means to indigenous people. Is Thanksgiving a loaded word? Anyway, it's a bunch of like Native American women flipping a table over that's loaded with all of the traditional turkey dinner, right? So YouTube, po you know, put posted. A I mean, this is like a beautiful table with turkey and all that stuff, and it's, it's like six Native American women. Throwing it over, you know, throwing it upside down, destroying it. This is what the indigenous, this is what this day means to indigenous people. And, um, you know, liberals are unthankful. They're unthankful. They're ungrateful. Liberals are ungrateful. They're, they're trying to spread their misery to all of us who like the holiday who are thankful for a holiday that Christian forefathers gave us. Praise God. But they're, oh, they're offended because Thanksgiving reminds them of how, you know, European settlers stole land and gave people diseases or whatever. Come on. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, no, I know, I know, right, brother? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, but they, but they, re, you know, they rewrote that chapter of the book because the pilgrims are horrible people and blah blah blah, you know. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I agree with that. To be woke means to be completely asleep, right? You know, um, to be blinded. They hate God. That's what I'm saying. That's where I'm getting at. <laughs> you said it better than I could. That's right. Because that, that's what the Bible says, right? They glorified him not as God, and neither were they thankful. Period. I mean, this is the week, right, where they get offended because Thanksgiving reminds them how European settlers supposedly stole the land, right, from the Native Americans. But, but let me ask you, you know, they're, they make up this whole story and, you know, about how, but look, if somebody, if people are dumb enough to trade Manhattan for $20 worth of beads and trinkets, which is what they say they did, you know, um, I guess that's their loss. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you keep it right. No, I'm kidding. They ruined it. Um, but, you know, uh, some of the liberals go so far as to say Thanksgiving is a celebration of white imperialism and the genocide, the supposed genocide of, of Native American people. But, you know, the, here's the way I look at it, and you can agree or disagree, but if European settlers hadn't settled America— hadn't come over here and made, you know, and, and and had dominion over it, like the Bible says to do, right? Okay. Um, and hadn't instituted our form of government that we have today, bring, brought law and order, designed and built the infrastructure that, that we have today in America, bringing modern society, bringing the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, then, you know, the Native American tribes very well might be living in teepees. You know, warring with each other, enslaving one another, committing genocide on one another, okay? That was a thing. 
Um, having slaves, they had slaves. A lot of the tribes did. And they'd probably be out there doing a rain dance, hoping that, that the gods, the demons or whatever, would bring the rain and they wouldn't starve to death the next year. And but they want to people want to complain about you know having a grocery store on every other corner and having all the luxuries of the modern day conveniences. I'm just saying, you know, if they want to go go back to that or whatever, you know, but that's just my opinion on it. That that's uh, maybe an uncomfortable truth here. But that brings me back to Romans one because it says here, you know, this is why the reprobate God haters hate Thanksgiving. I found an article. This is Huffington Post. Remember the remembering two spirits this Thanksgiving. Two spirits, okay? I don't know what two. I looked up two spirits. That's something about you know I don't know Native American people or whatever. I don't understand it. But anyway, the Romans one's about the reprobates and they're unthankful. This is a, a Huffering Huffington Post article. He says this: As I prepare for Thanksgiving holiday, I'm reminded of the autumnal harvest time spirit, uh, spiritual significance. At the time, uh, as a time of connectedness, I pause to acknowledge what I've been, I have to be thankful for. But I also have to reflect on the holiday as a time of remembrance, historical and familial. Historically, I'm reminded that for many Native Americans, Thanksgiving is not a cause for celebration, but a, rather a day of, of mourning, remembering the real significance of the first Thanksgiving in 1621 as a symbol of persecution and genocide blah, 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 Native Americans and long history of bloodshed with European settlers, right? Because they weren't savages and they weren't cannibals and all of that. Anyway, I'm also reminded of my two-spirit Native American brothers and sisters who struggled with their families and tribes not approaching, uh, approving of their sexual identities and gender expressions as many of us do with our families of, and faith communities today. Yes, there is an internalized homophobia in every gay community, but as Native Americans, we were taught not to like ourselves because we're not white. In our communities, people don't like us because we're gay. Gabriel Duncan, member of the Bay Area American Indian Two Spirits, told the Pacific News Service. And consequently, many Two-Spirit Native Americans leave their reservations in isolated communities hoping to connect with larger LGBT communities in local urban cities. Excuse me. However, due to racism and cultural sensitivity, many two-spirits, I guess two-spirit means Indian, Native American, I don't know, feel less understood and more isolated than they did back home. But homophobia is not indigenous to Native American culture. Listen to this. Homophobia is not indigenous to Native American culture. Here's where they just kind of like, they just tip the, the, their cards here. Rather, it is one of the many devastating effects of colonization and Christian missionaries that today two spirits may be respected within one tribe and yet ostracized by another. Quote, homophobia was taught to us by a component of Western education and religion. Navajo anthropologist Wesley Thomas has written, we were presented with an entirely new set of taboos which did not correspond to our own models and which focused on sexual behavior rather than intricate role two-spirit people played. And as a result, this mis misrepresentation, our nations no longer accepted us as they once had. And uh, so there you have it. Um, you know, the Native Americans, they didn't have taboos. They were you know, doing all kinds of ungodly, wicked, reprobate things. And in many cases, if you go and read the stories of the Navajo, not the Navajo, um, the Comanche, and, uh, there's there's some horrible things. I mean, very, very much reprobate. I'm not obviously not saying all of them are reprobate or anything, but, um, you know, the best thing that could have ever happened to the Native American people is that some white European people came over with the gospel. And don't get me wrong. Were there bad people, bad things? Absolutely. I'm not going to get off into that, but thank God, you know, I'm thankful for what we have. I, I'd rather be, you know, I'd rather have what we have and the, the blessings and all of the things. I'm going to be thankful for it. That's all I'm saying. And um, I know this was kind of a weird 
tangent, but um, I, I'm going to be thankful for for what we have in modern technology and society, and you know, food distribution and all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm going to see the good side in it, and not you know just be ungrateful and complain about everything because it could have gone a whole different direction, right? Could have gone a whole different direction. It's the same thing with slavery. Am I for slavery? No. Do do I think it's a good thing? No. A lot of a lot of people. God save. And by the way, there's a lot of people that are benefiting from, uh, you know, that, that from the society that's been developed since then uh, over here in this place right now. And uh, a lot of people are better off than they would have been, uh, you know, living in a teepee out in the wilderness. All right. So we can see back to the message here as I close it out. We can see from our example that, that Jesus and Paul, that Thanksgiving is part of prayer. And, uh, you know, the Lord's Prayer was an interesting one. I was thinking about this, and he doesn't say thanks to the Lord or anything there right in that phrase, but I think it's wrapped up in that, those opening phrases, right? You know, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, it's it's basically, I almost look at that prayer as like a bullet point outline. And if you would, if you were to just take each one of those phrases, and then, you know, I'll often just say say the first line, not as a Catholic, you know, <coughs> Catholic re vain repetition, but then I'll just, it reminds me to pray and, you know, give thanks to God at that point and, and worship him. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God, you're so good. Thank you, God. We worship you. I worship you. I thank you for all that you do. And I, I you know, there's so many things to be thankful. For. And I'll use that. And then I'll use each one as I go through, uh, I'll say, forgive, you know, um, when I talk about forgiveness, you know, forgive me as I forgive others and so forth. Um, yeah, I, I remember the things that I've done wrong. You could use that prayer as a bullet point, as an outline for your, uh, your prayer. But at, Jesus is also, if you were to go around it, the, the con context around that prayer, you would find that Jesus, you know, in like, so in Matthew six, uh, he's telling them to not worry about financial situations and so forth. He's, he's saying, keep your eyes uh, you know, off of earthly things and lift up your eyes to the Lord. I'm not going to go through all of that tonight, but in first Thessalonians five, it says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing and get Gideon in everything. Verse 18, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Does that sound right? All right. So when we are finally in the presence of the Lord Jesus, the Bible says this in Revelation 11, verse 15, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four elders and 20 elders sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hath reigned. So when we get to heaven, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do prayers of thanksgiving. My friend, we have so much to be thankful for. Don't let people ruin the holiday. Keep it about Christ. And again, you know, a lot of people hate, uh, you know, they hate our history in America. They hate, you know, what we stand for because they were, they, you know, whether we agreed with their denominations, they were people who named the name of Christ and they brought Christian values and so forth. And in Colossians chapter one, the Bible says, verse 12, to remind you, giving thanks unto God and to the Father, which hath made us to be partakers of, of the inheritance and in light of the saints and light. And in Colossians 3, 17, it says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. This is a praise. This is a command. This is what we're told to do is to be thankful to the Lord. And we need to pray and give thanks, as it says here in Colossians. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. I pray that, that we would have a great Thanksgiving. I pray that you would be honored, glorified. I pray, Lord, that um, we would just... Uh,